Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our next Aim to Learn webinar uh, brought to you by the Aim Higher Consortium. And today we have with us uh, Linda Thompson from JARI and then uh, representatives from both JWF Industries and Kongsberg, uh, Sean Kuntz and David Zucco. Uh, so welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. Today okay. We're going to get uh, a little bit of a, a preview of some great upcoming events uh, surrounding Showcase for Commerce, and that being a supply chain briefing by JWF Industries in, in Kongsberg. Uh, so before we get into that, we will uh, just do a brief overview of AIM Hire, just for those who may be joining us for the first time. Uh, so really, what is the, the AIM Hire Consortium? It's a defense-focused project around Southwest Pennsylvania and West Virginia, funded by the Department of Defense, uh, all geared towards strengthening and growing the defense supply chain in Pennsylvania and Southwest Pennsylvania and West Virginia, with the focus on adoption of advanced manufacturing technologies and providing benefits to supply chain members, such as opportunities to, to learn and connect, uh, such as just to learn about opportunities in the defense supply chain. We have a, a wide range of organizations that form the AIM Hire Consortium from economic and workforce development organizations such as Catalyst Connection, with the, who I'm with, and JARI, who Linda is representing, uh, to our technology institutes like America Makes an Arm, and a number of our uh, outstanding regional universities uh, that are also participating uh, from a, a technical standpoint and a further development standpoint. So it's a, a really broad group that brings a lot of resources to the region. And finally, before I, I hand it over to Linda, just want to highlight our supplier capabilities database that is uh, ever growing. Uh, really, the focus here is to bring together the defense ecosystem and have an easy way for both existing suppliers and those that may be new to the region to understand the various manufacturing capabilities, as well as manufacturing support capabilities uh, that exist in the region and to be able to leverage this tool to make those connections. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Linda. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen today. We're really gonna have, a, I think, a, a great uh, discussion that Linda's gonna lead. And uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Linda. Thank, thanks, Matt. We really appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning and to represent the strong AIM consortium that is uh, that you got that Catalyst has put together. Um, Jari is an economic development organization headquartered in Johnstown and serving um, many counties in southern Alleghenies and western Pennsylvania, re depending upon the um, type of service that we're providing. Uh, but we are the Procurement Technical Assistance Center for Cambria, Somerset, Indiana, and Fayette counties. And as such, we are working in the um, federal and state marketplace to encourage um, investment and supply chain work in that area. And as such, um, we bring that capability to the AIM Consortium. So um, not only in uh, working with supply chain and outreach to companies in our region, uh, we also represent AIM in um, some of the workforce development initiatives that we're undertaking together to make sure that our workforce is second to none in this um, marketplace. So, uh, you know, Jari's really pleased to be a part of the AIM consortium, and we're very pleased to, to represent what we think is a, an amazing uh, region of Pennsylvania. Um, so today, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the uh, Showcase for Commerce which is um, also part of the AIM consortium uh, programming. Uh, the showcase has been around for 31 years. Um, it was started back in 1990 uh, with uh, Congressman Murtha, the, cha the Chamber of Commerce here in Johnstown and Jari all working together to make sure that we were building our economy, building our supply, supply chain opportunities, and building our capabilities to do business in this um, uh, marketplace. So it's been a special niche of ours for many years, and um, the showcase has continued to be sort of our 
annual event where we bring all those people together, decision makers from Congress, decision makers from DOD, and most importantly, the business leadership and companies that you know are working in the space or who want to work in the space to learn more about each other and how we can better um, serve uh, the needs of our defense, uh, uh, the defense of our country. So anyway, we, we're really excited for this year's event. Uh, it will be held June 1st through 3rd in Johnstown. And um, the first day is a golf tournament, but the second and third day is packed or packed with um, conferences and networking events and um, other types of uh, uh, opportunities to learn and gather. And, and it really um, culminates with a large exhibition where we bring together um, you know, thousands of people who will be uh, visiting and uh, talking to each other during the exhibition phase of the uh, showcase. Um, I do also want to mention that our two companies that are uh, to with us today for um, to talk about the supply chain briefings that we're doing at this year's event also are, uh, they can talk about this hopefully uh, at the end of the program today, but they also are hosting a networking event together um, on uh, June 1st, which is a, and the premier event is this year, so we're really anxiously awaiting that as well. Um, so with that, let me just talk a little bit about our supplier briefings. Um, every year, Jari um, and our PTAC really puts together the, um, the supplier briefing for that year. And this year we had an opportunity to bring two companies in to do supplier briefings, uh, Kongsberg and JWF Industries. Uh, Kongsberg um, is, their briefing will start at 8.45 on June 2nd and go until 9.45, and then the JWF uh, supply chain briefing will run from 10 to 11. Both of these events will precede our government acquisition leaders briefings, which start at 11.30 that day and go into the afternoon. Um, and then at four o'clock, we have the opening ceremonies of our exhibit hall. And that's when uh, we will um, you know, all be at the uh, first summit arena for, for uh, the start of the exhibitions. So um, with that, I just want to uh, briefly introduce uh, David Zuko, who is the Director of Federal and State Government Relations for Kongsberg. And uh, we have with us Sean Koontz, who is the Director of Business Development for JWF Industries. Both of these guys have been longstanding um, executives in this field. They are incredible experts at what they do. I've had the pleasure of working with them for many, many years. I won't say how many because it'll, it'll, it'll make them look older than they are. Uh, and then, um, you know, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about, um, you know, what the supply chain needs are in this industry, what, how they handle supply chain, and uh, we'll talk also about their companies and what they do. So um, with that, uh, I will um, ask uh, David if he would um, maybe start out today's conversation by just uh, talking a little bit about your business, what you do, um, how you contribute to the defense uh, industrial base, and maybe you can even say a few words about yourself. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Linda. Uh, and. and uh... Thank you, Matt. Great to be here uh, with everybody. So um, my name is Dave Zuko. I'm Director of Federal and State Government Relations uh, here at Kongsberg. I've been with the company for uh, 16 years. Uh, we, we started in Johnstown in 2005. Uh, our very first showcase was 2006, and that's when I started with the company. So I've been here since the beginning. Uh, we're a Norway-based company uh, focusing on technology uh, in the uh, defense uh, defense industry, oil and gas, and the uh, commercial marine industries. Here in Johnstown, we uh, focus on the Department of Defense, uh, the U.S. defense market, and we make a family of uh, remotely operated weapon systems. You can see a picture behind me uh, has one of our systems on it, uh, intended to allow for the operation of a crew serve weapon, uh, such as a 50 caliber machine gun, uh, on a remote operated turret, so the operator can sit inside protected by armor 
uh, and that avoids um, hazards such as uh, sniper fire, uh, vehicle rollovers, uh, IEDs, those types of things. Uh, so we have an approximately 200,000 square foot facility here uh, located in the Johnstown Industrial Park. We actually started uh, with uh, space over in the Jari Incubator, uh, and, and that was critical for us. So Jari has been a huge partner for us uh, ever since we started here in Johnstown. Uh, and our first, excuse me, our first showcase uh, was extremely successful as well. Um, we actually had quite a quite a few opportunities uh, come out of that, uh, and uh, also introduced and met some of the executives from JWF. So started off that networking uh, that Linda was mentioning very early on uh, in in our life cycle here in Johnstown. Thank you, Dave. I pr really appreciate that. Sean, we'll turn the same question over to you. Can you talk a little bit about the the business and? Uh, you know, how you contribute to the defense industrial base. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So JWF Industries is a privately owned company. It was founded in 1987. Bill Pelagic, our president and CEO, actually bought uh, the two-car garage that uh, his dad was working out of as a side job from his mother. And since those humble beginnings in 1987, we've grown to 1.2 million square feet. We have over 400 employees and we're located out of seven facilities across four states. Uh, we are a non-union workforce and as I said, we're privately held. Uh, we're a small business, even though you wouldn't know that by our size and breadth and capabilities, but by the next code classification of the federal government, we still are a small business. The good news for the supply base is we want to stay a small business and stay under 500 and we bump the ceiling, you know, over 400 employees right now. We've had a, a tremendous hiring spree over the last nine months. We've been very blessed with some contract awards based on some hard work from our folks. Um, we are in the defense, the energy, and the commercial business sector. We actually started out a commercial business. So for those of you that are on the line that are a small business, you may be a few men in the shop somewhere. Or, uh, I'm not privy to who all's on the line, but you know, don't give up your dreams. Keep fighting, keep growing, keep evolving. You know, JWF came from that two-car garage to what we are today. We are ISO certified, we're NFC certified, we're ASME certified. We keep evolving our certification, which allows us to grow in the business sector. Um, we have a lot of great partnerships across the defense business spectrum, including Convert, 15 year history with them that we appreciate very much. And as Dave said, that was all brought together through JARI and through Showcase for Commerce. Uh, Showcase for Commerce also allowed JWF to make connections to what was then the United Defense, which is now BAE Systems New York. And they're one of our primary business partners. And so the good news for the supply base there is, uh, you know, we do tend to subcontract different types of commodity operations as, you know, we evolve ourselves. You know, Bill was a welder, uh, so welding is our primary capability and machining, we have significant machine capability. But we, we like to focus on the larger machine center operations and, you know, the smaller items, we would subcontract those out for the base as well. Uh, on the energy side, we do everything from, you know, renewable energy, which includes, you know, offshore and solar. Uh, and then we have on the power generation side also is, you know, hydroelectric, oil and gas. We have our own products we manufacture. And there's commercial opportunities as well, because if, if you're going to do defense work with JWF, you have to be ISO certified. And um, if you're not ISO certified, which I strongly recommend to those on the line that aren't, that you get that certification. Uh, there is a limited amount of commercial uh, opportunity with us, but even there, because quality is the number one priority at JWF Industries, uh, next to the safety and well-being of our employees, uh, you will have limited opportunity. But uh, we are a growing business, and we are expanding our supply base, and we look forward to seeing you at Showcase for Commerce. Thank you, Sean. Um, I'm now going to just ask you, Sean, to um, expand a little bit about the types of things that you buy what do you folks buy what goods and services are you looking for in your supply chain sure well from a bit i'll, I'll tell it from two perspectives first of all from the business development perspective i always look for a capability that we don't have right because then that's a tool in my toolbox that i can go out and market new business for the organization and create a partnership with that supplier an example of that is you know, people with NAFC qualifications because that business market is really blowing up and there's a lot of money being dumped in at the federal level to expand our naval fleet. And so um, from that perspective, bring us a capability we don't have. But on the 
procurement side now as it is, you know, everything from small machine parts, large machine parts, because we do have a good backlog of large machine work, uh, because there is a limited capability uh, in the marketplace right now for that, but not everybody has the size that uh, is required for some of these uh, investment projects. And then, you know, we do metal processing, uh, welding and fabrication, uh, you know, uh, automotive parts, because we do complete combat vehicle builds here at JWF, which a lot of people don't, don't know that. And then, you know, of course, hardware, commercial off-the-shelf items or COTS items, you know, we're always looking for good suppliers for those types of commodities. Uh, plate lasering, uh, forming and bending. Um, from time to time, even though we have three paint booths and we've got the largest automated paint booth east of the Mississippi, we at times have surge capacity. Like now, we're, we're capacity on that paint line, so we're offloading cart painting, uh, powder coating. There's opportunities in our supply base for that right now. Great, that's really good information. Uh, and um, I'm going to ask Dave the same question. Can you tell us a little bit about the supply chain uh, needs of uh, Kongsberg? Sure, absolutely. Um, normally, uh, there are commodities uh, that we're purchasing for the system. We have uh, system components are the those commodities that are fairly specialized, uh, like the thermal sensor, uh, the day camera, um, the range finders, those types of things are, uh, we typically go out and find those suppliers due to the special uh, nature of those components. But in a more general sense, we're, we're usually looking for uh, machine shops and fabricators. Um, precision machining is, is probably the biggest uh, opportunity in our, in our supply chain um, we have m most of the well the structure of the weapon systems the typically uh, machined aluminum castings um, so we'll have a contractor purchase the raw raw uh, materials they could be um, uh, uh, they could be cast or ingot uh, uh, blocks uh, to be machined and it's we basically require um, full service on those parts. So you would you would machine the parts, do the surface treatment, and then cart coat them as well. Um, and sizes range from, uh, um, you know, the very small parts that Sean referred to up to, you know, a base plate that's five feet wide by uh, six feet long um, and three inches thick. Uh, so it's a pretty broad scope of machine type products that we buy. And then also there's a lot of electronics in the system. Um, there are servo motors and controls, things like that. Um, but a lot of, you know, it's all driven by circuit card assemblies and uh, cable harnesses and things like that. Um, those are also important commodities for us. Uh, cable harnesses, mill standard cable assemblies are something that we're always looking for, you know, sources for. Uh, and then circuit card assemblies and electronics is another area. Uh, that we're always looking for suppliers in. Yeah, that's uh, terrific. Um, let me ask you a question that I didn't ask you in advance. So I apologize if this is uh, something you may not have a total a number on, but can you tell us about how, how large your supply chains are? I mean, how many, about how many companies at any given time are, are part of your supply chain? Yeah, Dave, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so our first tier suppliers, we have roughly, uh, say, 40, 40 main first tier suppliers. And then each of those probably has four to five uh, key uh, third tier uh, subcontractors. So, you know, we're, we're probably talking a supply chain of 150 companies, uh, maybe 200 companies, about seven or eight hundred employees all throughout the Kongsberg just for the weapon station systems that we build here. Um, so that's that's about the size of our supply chain. I think we cover some 24 states uh, with our supply chain. Uh, okay. But we have stayed local and uh, we, we do look to source locally to the extent that we can. Yeah, that was going to be my follow-up question as to how important that local supply chain is. And I know from talking with a lot of companies like you that it's really important uh, to have a local supply chain for, you know, quality, speed, uh, cost, 
you know, cost considerations and things like that, but you have to have the right uh, type of company to be your supplier. So Sean, can you comment on that as well? Sure. So, you know, our revenue cycle can fluctuate from year to year based on economic conditions, federal government contracting cycles, you know, and mm -hmm. different budget levels. And we typically do revenue anywhere from 70 to 120 million a year. So to support that, our supply base, we have probably about 100, somewhere between 80 and 100 premier supplier partners. And then all told with secondary and depending on surge, that number can be anywhere from two to 500 suppliers in the supply base. Wow. And to Dave's point, we have strategic objectives to meet local spend requirements here because as good corporate social responsibility and being that we're all from the community and it's locally owned by Bill and John Pelagic, we want to give back to the local area. So we do everything we can to develop that supply base locally. And to your earlier point, it does help with you know total landed costs because transportation costs are lower and you know it's easier to manage those suppliers and help develop them. Because we have very like Dave's group, we have very stringent quality requirements. And in today's market, it's all about the quality of the product. You know, you have to, you just have to have a quality product. There's no exceptions. Right. So in in that same sense and in that same line of thought. Uh, or, or would you be able to just give us a few examples of what you expect from a supplier? And in this case, I mean, Sean, I'm going to start with you. And you already talked about ISO certification being a key qualification for you when when someone's looking at your, you know, to supply your company. What what other kinds of things are you looking for? So we actually have a team that will onboard a supplier. We, we have some folks from purchasing and from quality that will do an audit. Uh, they have an onboarding process which they follow. Um, you know, we, we don't leave them alone. We look for a quality management system. We have some form of a quality management system and we look for process-based organizations because we're a process-based organization. And it's easy to manage a process. You know, typically when there's a problem, it's because you had a bad process, not because you had somebody that showed up for work intending to do a bad job, right? So, and we try to teach people how to think like that and how to operate like that because then, you know, if I minimize these defects because we want to push that waste out of the supply chain. So those, those are the things, if you've got a positive attitude, you have the capability that we need and you have, you know, some type of quality management system, you know, and a process-based mindset, you, you can more than likely be onboarded and be successful as a JWF supplier. Thank you. Great. Dave, can you speak to that as well as to the maybe some examples of requirements that you like to see in your supply chain? Sure, absolutely. And and uh, not by any coincidence, it's going to sound very similar to what Sean <laughs> said. Uh, that's because that process works. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're very much a process oriented company. We, we have and, and this is going to this is a, a little bit of a preview into what Jared's going to speak to. Uh, the supplier briefing next week, uh, our supplier quality assurance requirements. That's the uh, main document, uh, the guideline, the roadmap for each supplier that is looking to get onboarded uh, of how you accomplish that, how you achieve the goal of getting qualified to be a Kongsberg supplier. And that go, that covers um, uh, leadership within the company, how, how human resources are managed, um, physical infrastructure, tooling, facilities, equipment, uh, IT infrastructure, cybersecurity, extremely important these days in the DoD world. Uh, we'll evaluate, and we have the same type of team that goes out to qualify suppliers. Uh, we're looking at your um, everything from your manufacturing processes, your management, to how your social responsibility in the, in the community. Um, Norway is a very forward-leaning country when it comes to environmental uh, compliance and, and being friendly to the environment. We look at all of that stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty rigorous process. And if you've gone through AS9100 certification, you should be well prepared uh, to embark on that journey. We do require an ISO certification at a minimum because uh, short of that, we've found that companies really struggle, and even the AS companies struggle to get through the process. But um, you got to have a process and, you, and certifications, externally certified processes. Uh, we can we can look at that pretty confidently and feel like you're going to get through and become a supplier to Kongsberg. 
Um, and just to add to earlier comment that we made, um, local is better. When, when you are talking to the operations and procurement folks, they would like the supplier right next door as well as engineering. Um, so, you know, if you can be in a community or come to a community or be close to a community like ours and have primes like Kongsberg and JWF to, to approach with the expertise that you need, um, we prefer to work with local companies. Um, and just to plug uh, Jari and, and the PTAC a little more, wonderful job with um, going out into Somerset County and Indiana County and uh, Bedford, I think, is the other, uh, where the entire counties are now uh, federal hub zones. Um, that was huge for us. We're a large business. We have to submit contract subcontracting plans for every one of our contracts. Um, I'm one of the SBLOs here. Um, so that's very important to us. And that gave us um, a whole uh, uh, offering of local companies with this hub zone certification that gets us credit. It's a local close supplier that we can work with and uh, efficiently troubleshoot problems and get deliveries. And, you know, they can run over here, we can run up there. Uh, it just works out really well. So um, I think this region has a lot to offer. And, uh, and looking forward to seeing all of that next week at Showcase and hopefully see a lot of you folks there too. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Sean. Matt, uh, do we have any uh, additional questions or time or are we are we yeah. at our, yeah. You said uh, we're, we are coming up to the, the end of our time and I do wanna the thank you uh, thank you all for joining, but we do have one question. You mentioned uh, cybersecurity, Dave, mm -hmm. and Given some of the changes and the uncertainty surrounding, like with CMMC and some of kind of the starts and stops, how do you, as prime contractors, manage that uncertainty, but then still work with your suppliers to make sure they're where they need to be? We've taken a very forward leaning approach with our subcontractors. Um, when you're a supplier to Kongsberg, it's not, um, we're not just, you know, buying the cheapest things that we can buy. And as soon as you don't offer the cheapest price, we just get rid of you. It's it's a partnership. We've had suppliers on board here since the beginning. So, and we, this is our general approach with a lot of things. Export compliance was another, new for a lot of local companies working with a Norwegian company. So what we did was we engaged a consultant and we had a number of conference calls with our entire supply chain. Um, and that's European suppliers, which is, is completely foreign to, as well as US suppliers, including many small businesses. Um, because our fear was that we were going to lose a, lo a lot of companies were going to get out of the DOD business because of this is so onerous. So we hired a consultant, uh, actually a local company here, and we uh, did conference calls with our supply base, helped them get educated on the requirements and actually provided um, contacts at our consultant and other references for other consultants so that they could engage directly uh, once we got to a certain point uh, and help them step by step through the process. So yeah, it's a little up in the air and, and we're not really sure um, when it's all going to be fully in effect, but um, we're, I believe we're at CMMC three or four, level four or three. Uh, we strive to get our suppliers to achieve that same level of compliance and kind of stay lockstep with us as we work through this process. Well, very good. Now, a key message there being, you know, the small manufacturers that are looking to do business also need to look not just a business opportunity, but for that partnership. And that's really great to hear that I've heard that from both of you looking at it that way. So again, thank you. This was a really great session. And we all definitely look forward to uh, to attending showcase next week and uh, learning more about uh, Kongsberg and JWF. So thanks again. Thank thanks you. With that, we'll uh, we'll say have a, a great day to everyone, and we will see you at the next Aim to Learn. Thanks, and have a great day.